Fora TV. The world is thinking. Yeah, so we know that the world is warming and we know the Arctic is warming faster. So why is the Arctic warming faster? Well, there are a bunch of reasons. For one thing, the Arctic being covered with a lot of snow and ice tends to reflect away a lot of the sun's heat. So as the world starts to warm and that snow and ice melt, the darker land and water absorb more heat. And that causes more warming, which causes more melting, which causes more warming. So that's one of the reasons. As that sea ice goes away, the heat that's absorbed by the ocean can then be radiated back to the atmosphere more easily. So that's another reason why the Arctic warms faster. Also, the layer of the atmosphere in the Arctic that has to warm in order to warm the surface is thinner. So that's a third reason the Arctic warms faster, and there are several more. So now the Arctic is warming faster, and then that is reflecting back to the globe. How, is it, how does Arctic climate change affect global climate change? Well, for one thing, it speeds up the global warming because of this reason I just explained about the reflectivity change. Another reason is that the uptake and release of carbon is different. When it, you get in a warming world, you start to release more carbon, say from thawing permafrost. Now that carbon can come out in the form of carbon dioxide, usually in dry systems. It can also come out in the form of methane, and generally in wetter systems. And of course, methane is even more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So that's another reason that warming in the Arctic reflects back and warms the globe even more. Then, Another thing is that changes in the Arctic affect biodiversity around the globe. So we know that, for example, migratory birds will go to the Arctic for breeding and feeding grounds. Now, one of the things that's happening as it's warming in the Arctic is the tree line is shifting north. It's moving into the tundra. So that sounds like a good thing, maybe, to some people. More vegetation, more forests. Well, it's a problem for those birds because they rely on that open tundra for their habitat. Another thing that happens as that land surface, the tundra is pretty reflective. It's not as reflective as ice, but it's light colored and it's not very vegetated, so it reflects a lot of um, sunlight back. When you move trees in there, it actually gets darker and denser and it absorbs more of the sunlight and the heat. So there's this trade-off between more absorption of carbon by trees and more absorption of heat by this darker, denser uh, layer of trees. This is still an area of research, but it looks like it's actually a, a bad thing. It looks like it's actually more uh, absorption of heat than it is helping us with the absorption of carbon. So we know we want to plant trees, but we tend to want to plant them around the equator and rather than at the poles with this movement. So um, there's also resources that we get from the Arctic. Jane mentioned fish and also oil and gas. And as things change in the Arctic, it's going to change those resources. We may not be able to get the same fish resources, we may be able to get more oil and gas, but we have to be very careful about how we do that because it's a very fragile environment. So also sea level rise, okay? We know that we're melting the Greenland ice sheet and uh, melting glaciers around the Arctic. And also we're getting an increase in precipitation, so there's more runoff for the river, from the rivers. All of that's adding to global sea level rise. In addition to adding water to the oceans, it's adding fresh water to the oceans, so it's less salty. That affects the ocean overturning circulation. So there's a key place in the North Atlantic where the water has to be cold enough and salty enough to sink. That sinking initiates an overturning circulation. It's like a conveyor belt, and it carries heat from the equator towards the poles. As we dump more fresh water in there, we slow down that overturning circulation. That can have a global climatic effects. So there are all these ways with this reflectivity and sea level rise and ocean circulation changes, changes in resources, biodiversity and carbon release and uptake that Arctic climate change feeds back and increases global climate change.